Coming up on Extreme Yachts, we check in with the crew at Northern Marine as they build a 95-foot vessel that combines the luxury of a classic motor yacht with the fuel efficiency and power of a long-range cruiser. And just a little trip south in Anacortes, Washington, Northern Marine Yachts, who like their Canadian neighbors, are in the business of creating jaw-dropping opulence on the high seas, are getting ready to dive into their newest project, a 90-foot maritime mansion. This amazing vessel will include everything they could possibly need to be considered a self-sustained nautical city, except maybe a post office. Founded in 1995, Northern Marine began their foray into the industry by constructing commercial fishing trawlers. But as they observed developing trends in the luxury craft market, they updated their mission to creating high-class yachts built on their already solid commercial infrastructure. They're really catching on. People like the whole robust, you know, just big, brute-looking yacht. They're ocean-going vessels built for a very discerning group of owners. I mean, on the exterior, it looks like it's ready to go up and fish Alaska. On the interior, it's a different ballgame. The sky is the limit in terms of options and what we can do with these boats. And they're about to prove it once again. There's nothing they can't do as the team gets together to discuss the plans for their latest project. Met with the client, went over the drawings and a couple things. He's definitely interested in having a larger bar. He said he wants to be able to seat at least six people. Typically, the, the people that we're building boats for, they're, they're used to this level. There's a lot of personal preference, you know. A lot of times, these owners will have owner's reps or captains that make those decisions for them. We get that information and we move forward with uh, whatever it is that they want. This tailor-made 95-foot yacht features a 20 and a half foot beam, fully stocked galley, opulent salon, plush master stateroom, and guest accommodations comparable to a five-star boutique hotel. The bridge is on the cutting edge of modern nautical navigation, computer controlled and operated allowing for long range travels. The back of the bridge deck features room for a 28-foot fishing boat or any other aquatic toys the owner might desire. This is truly the height of maritime living. This is hands down going to be the nicest trolley we've ever built out of this, this company. Yeah. And with the fiberglass hull already constructed, the next step is to crane in the engine. So this morning, we rolled the boat outside in preparation for putting the main power plant in. She's a single engine, Caterpillar Marine Diesel. She's a commercial rated engine, which means she's continuous duty, designed to run 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. Then the crew at Northern Marine set out to build a floating city capable of around-the-world expeditions. We're able to build things concurrently where we're building the interior while we're laminating the hull at the same time. Don't go away. And back at Northern Marine, the team is preparing to embark on their latest project, a 95-foot expedition yacht for a client with a passion for deep-sea fishing and aquatic entertaining. To this date, we've built three 84-foot trawlers. So at 95 feet, this will be the largest full displacement trawler-style yacht that we've built. And with the hull constructed and the power plant in place, this milestone project is well underway. And with a build this size, the list of tasks seems endless. There's probably a half a dozen different trades that you know we oversee. You got lamination, you got electrical, mechanical, plumbing, carpentry. It's pretty challenging actually keeping everything tracking on the same course. You got to make sure that uh, one trade's not overstepping another one. It's a big puzzle we're putting together here. Unlike many manufacturers, Northern Marine assembles their yachts and modules. Each room is fully constructed and wired before eventually being lowered into the hull. So right now we're lifting the lower interior module. We're gonna drive it outside, pick it up, and drop it in the boat. It's a little bit different than what's traditionally done in yachts. Traditionally, you would build the interior. We've chosen to use this method uh, for two reasons. It's safer for our employees. They don't have to go up and down as many stairs. It also speeds up the build process. We're able to build things concurrently where we're building the interior while we're laminating the hull at the same time. So it's a much more efficient means of construction and the employees feel a lot better at the end of the day. Let's head down south to Anacortes, Washington to check in with the team at Northern Marine as they embark on their largest project to date. Our 95-footer is gonna be built with a specific intention of going fishing, going out with a group of guys, having a good time over the weekend, entertaining guests, family, and friends. Uh, we have a large boat deck. It's gonna house a custom-built 26-foot diesel tender on this side and a 14-foot hard-bottom inflatable on this side. This is a 5,000-pound capacity crane. It will lift your fishing boat at your destination, put it in the water for you. And just above the boat deck is the flybridge, which will include everything the customer needs for entertaining. And its construction is just underway. 
So this is our flybridge. We're using a slightly less traditional layup method of construction called Bead and Cove. This method of construction utilizes CNC cut frames to maintain accuracy and building a one-off part without using a, a female mold. We've shaped the core over the frames. We'll do two layers of structural foam core. We'll then glass the outside before flipping the part over, removing the frames and glassing the inside. This reduces cost and time and makes for a more efficient build process. And while the fiberglass is laid out, the welding team fabricates the stainless steel frame for the Venturi windshield. This was patterned off of a CAD drawing that gives us the exact footprint. We're putting this all together. We're going to go ahead and mount it. And then we're putting Lexan uh, shield there. And when they're up on the boat, it basically keeps the wind off of them. And below deck, the extensive battery systems are being installed, which supply enough power to keep the entire vessel running while the generators are shut down. These are two volt cell batteries. They weigh uh, 276 pounds each. They're 1,635 amp hour batteries. They combine to make a 24 volt cell. And the reason why we're doing these is these last longer, they're gel cell, and they're maintenance free. And for a boat designed to trek around the world, it needs all the power it can get. These boats just plow through the water. This is a you know, nine to 10 knot boat. And to keep the ride smooth and comfortable, Northern Marine employs a clever trick to add extra stabilizing weight. Right now, we're in one of the bilges of the yacht. Beneath us, inside this bilge, is 60,000 pounds of lead ballast. These are actual nine millimeter bullets cast in resin. You can be in a heavy sea and, and not get beat up too bad. Northern Marine is closing in on their own test phase for this massive expedition yacht. But before they get this thing in the water, let's get a little update on the progress. So right now we're in our 95 foot yacht. We have telecommunications, satellite TV. We really have everything that you need to be self-sufficient out on the water for long periods of time. And you may be wondering how the clients who suffer from motion sickness cope with life on the water. Well, the team at Northern Marine has thought of everything. These are roll stabilizers that help keep the boat uh, from pitching side to side. If the boat wants to start to pitch one way, these roll stabilizers turn the opposite direction. If they sense roll, they, they right the boat. And on the bridge deck, the navigation systems are being hooked up. We are in the pilot house. I am installing the electronics, making everything work, hooking up power and turning everything on, making sure it all talks to one another, have charts for anywhere in the world, basically, at the click of a mouse. Really amazing how far the chart plotters have come. We're at about probably 90% completion. You know, we've got our flooring are done. We've got carpet throughout the boat now. We've got all of our stone installed throughout the galley and the bars and everything. The exciting part of it is, is that when, when all that stuff is in place, then you can start putting all the finishing touches on it. But before all those accessories and finishing touches are added, it's time to test fire the engine systems. So we're here in the engine room. What we're going to go ahead and do at this point in the game is push the go button on the engine, light it up, and then we'll test our steering and everything else. We'll light her up here. We're gonna go ahead and test all of our stations at this point in the game. Okay, Dave, we're gonna go ahead and bump the pod house control into forward. Are you ready? Roger, we're ready. Clock turn counterclockwise. All right, very good. I'm gonna move over to the uh, port side control. Okay, Dave, we're good. So that pretty much completes all the testing at the stations. We're real happy with that. Uh, boat's getting closer to launch. Welcome back to Extreme Yachts. We've watched as the team at Northern Marine of Anacortes, Washington designed and constructed their latest masterpiece. From the hull assembly to the countless miles of electrical wiring, all the way to their state-of-the-art command center, these aquatic craftsmen have spared no expense to create one amazing machine. And now it's finally time for the newly christened expedition yacht Atlas to head out onto the waters for her first test run. Today we're doing sea trials. We're about 99.9% .9 complete, just getting ready to pass the boat on to the owner and take final delivery. So I hope you guys enjoy the ride. And with these kinds of accommodations, it'd be hard not to. This is the aft deck. It's just another exterior entertaining space where the guests can come out and enjoy a drink or a cup of coffee in the morning. Uh, there's also an aft docking station. So coming into a dock stern two, you have another full control station back here. Now we're on the boat deck. This is kind of a distinct feature to an expedition style boat. You carry your tenders and toys up here. So we're actually building a custom 26 foot diesel IO tender that's gonna sit up here. 
We have a 5,000 pound capacity crane and another diesel rib tender, hard bottom inflatable. This is the penthouse. This is the place to be. You've got a hot tub. We have a drop down TV that comes out of the overhead. There's a clear area forward, forward to the hard top for chaise lounges so people can be in the sun. 48 inch wide barbecue. We've got an ice maker up here, a refrigerator, freezer, really everything that you need to have a good time. And traveling down to the main deck, we get our first look at the amazingly designed and finished main salon. It's a pretty decadent area. We built a custom bar. We added a drop down TV from the overhead. We've got seating for all the guests, the dining room and the galley on this central space. This is the main entertaining space on the boat. The galley even employs a modern version of an old style dumbwaiter, often found in multi-level homes of the 1920s, which makes deliveries from the galley to the sky lounge all the way up to the sun deck. The main salon is a showcase of Northern Marines proficiency with their high-end woodwork. This exquisite spiral staircase is practically a work of art. A lot of really talented people who were involved in this set of stairs, which leads us into the sky lounge. This is another entertaining space that's great on the boat. You have a panoramic view, a lot of sunlight. There'll be a card table up here. There's entertainment, there's televisions, there's a wet bar. This is really where you come to have a great time up above. And from the classy Sky Lounge, we head down to the master stateroom. It's on the main level. It's full beam, which means that literally the master stateroom is from side to side, the full beam of the boat. A king size bed. There's two walk-in closets. There's a desk and a makeup center. But no master stateroom would be complete without a beautiful and spacious master bath. We really went over the top on the granite work and the marble work, added a whirlpool jacuzzi tub and radiant in-floor heat. And descend another staircase off the main salon to the lower deck to find three more luxurious staterooms. In the foyer, there's a coffee center. There's a full-size fridge freezer. There's also some nice accent lighting above a custom inlay in the marble floor. We've got three staterooms down below that have queen size bunks in them with ensuite heads. They've got flat screen televisions, full cable entertainment systems, hanging locker space, and all the luxury and creature comforts you'd have at home. There's a full laundry center with a laundry sink. And one of my favorite features over here that's actually a flip down treadmill with a TV behind it. And up at the bow of this Colossus is the state of the art pilot house. This is the business end of the boat. We're fly-by-wire. We're telling the engine what to do, the steering to the rudder, everything what to do from right here. We have two radars. I have one sitting here at one mile range, one sitting at two mile range. If I was in a little uh, more open water, I'd take that out to three or four, maybe even 16 miles if I was out in the ocean. You see all these little triangles on the radar? Those are boats. Those are ships coming at us. They have a new system, which is this thing up here called AIS. We're transmitting just like an airplane. We're transmitting a beacon. If you look on the chart here, it says a chart plotter. So it tells us real time exactly where we are in relation to a map. This is fairly new stuff. A couple years ago, we never had anything quite this nice. It's taken some of the work out of a captain's job, actually. No more paper charts, no more dividers, no more rulers. And because the Atlas is a sophisticated expedition yacht capable of traveling over 5,000 nautical miles in a single stretch, the lower deck and engine room has to compare in strength and capacity to the elegance and craftsmanship up above. With its 850 horsepower CAT diesel engine leading the charge, its high-powered onboard generators, its collection of high-tech power inverters and cutting-edge sewage treatment system, all the way to the desalinization setup, which turns seawater into fresh drinking water. This massive, versatile yacht is the perfect marriage of rugged adventure and extreme luxury.